Today on Behind the Myth, the disappearance of Jim Sullivan. Jim Sullivan, born James Anthony Sullivan on the 13th of August 1940, was an American singer-songwriter and guitarist who released two albums before disappearing without a trace or reason in New Mexico. Having grown up in the Linda Vista area of San Diego, California, where his Irish-American parents had moved from Nebraska to work in the defense industry, he decided to play music after becoming interested in the art, having listened to several local blues groups, later forming a local rock group for himself known as the Survivors. One of the members of the group included his sister-in-law, Kathy Doran. Jim married and went into business together with a college friend and purchased a bar close to where they resided. After this failed venture, Jim packed up his wife Barbara and young son and headed north to Los Angeles. While his wife worked at Capitol Records, Sullivan wrote songs and performed in increasingly prestigious clubs of the LA circuit. Friends of Jim contributed to the funding that enabled him to record his first album. Unfortunately for Sullivan, Nick Fennett, who had a number of well-known clients at Capitol Records, including Nat King Cole and Peggy Lee, turned down the opportunity to release the record. Instead, however, it was issued by a friend, Al Dobbs, on a small record label, Money. Dobbs set up the label specifically to help Jim set his music onto vinyl. The album, named UFO, was released in 1969. The record featured Sullivan songs in the style blending of folk, rock and country. Having only one single released from the album, the song Rosie, which in and of itself received very little public attention, Sullivan continued to perform in clubs. In 1970, he re-recorded the track Highway, taken from the UFO album for RCA Records as a promotional single, but no contract resulted from another attempt at getting onto a record label. In 1972, Jim Sullivan recorded his second album and titled it with his namesake. Despite his best effort, Jim's second attempt at establishing himself as a recording artist failed to lift off the ground. Sullivan found himself increasingly turning to alcohol to deal with the disappointment this undoubtedly brought to his psyche. This, of course, didn't help and brought strain into his marriage, which was beginning to disintegrate. In 75, Jim travelled east to Nashville, where Kathy Doran was working as a singer and songwriter in a last-ditch attempt to find success there. Sullivan left LA on Tuesday the 4th of March 1975 to drive alone to Nashville in his Volkswagen Beetle. The following day he received a caution from a highway patrol officer regarding his driving. Later, Jim checked into La Mesa Motel in Santa Rosa, New Mexico. Later reports suggest that Jim did not stay there that night and having left the key inside his room, went to buy a bottle of vodka from a nearby store. Apparently, he was seen 26 miles away at a remote ranch owned by the Ginetti family. His car was later found abandoned at the ranch and it was reported that he was seen walking away from it. Inside, investigators found money, papers, Jim's guitar, clothes and a box of his unsold records. Jim Sullivan hasn't been seen again since and there have been a variety of theories about what happened to the man who was 34 at the time of his disappearance. Ranging from being murdered becoming disorientated and lost, as well as the possibility of, and perhaps in light of his first album, UFO, abducted by aliens. Interestingly, search parties failed to locate any trace of where Jim might have gone or what happened to him. In a bizarre twist, a decomposed body, oddly resembling Sullivan, was found at a remote area several miles away from where Jim was last seen, but was determined not to be him. Jim Sullivan's records, especially UFO, developed something of a cult following years later, partly because of their rarity and obscurity. In 2010, 
Matt Sullivan, of no relation, decided to reissue UFO and made a serious attempt to uncover the unusual circumstances under which Jim disappeared. He interviewed many of those who knew him and those involved in his recordings. Unfortunately, this brought to light very little new information. And this is the extent of what is known about Jim and the story of his vanishing. It remains to be seen if the mystery surrounding the singer-songwriter will ever be solved, given the amount of time that has passed. Jim would be a man close to his 80s if still alive. But unless we find otherwise, the last traces of Jim Sullivan were lost to the sands of time. Thanks so much for tuning in, and please let me know what you believe happened to Jim in the comments section below. All I ask is that you be respectful to the subject and each other. Take care, friends.